Hello everybody, welcome to today's unboxing. We have Aoife walking away. I thought she was going to say hi. Aoife! Aoife, you want to come say hi? Maybe. She's just watching me. That's fine. Anyway, so today I have four boxes. I'm not entirely certain what's in all of them. I know I got a large box from Miskatonics. Miskatonic books. I have this from Veronica's books. It's a uh, Abe books, so it's probably an anti antiquarian book. So let's open this if I can find. Oh, box cutter. Wire box cutter? This isn't the box. Close enough. Gonna be careful anyway. As careful as I can be. That probably wasn't the smartest way to open this, to be honest. So I hope everybody's doing well today. Getting your uh, reading of the day done. I aim for about 100 pages a day. I don't always make it. That's fine. Sometimes I get a get a little little bug going. Read more than 100. Finish a whole book or two in one day. Feel good about myself. And then read nothing the next day. Anyway, so what do we got in this one? I'm kind of confused. I don't remember what I ordered because this is... Ah, Occult Science in India. Alright. This, it's just a slip that they sent me. This is how they wrapped it. Nice and... See, the, the used booksellers, they usually wrap these things pretty well, so you don't really have to worry. They take care of them, because they're already pretty uh, old in most cases, so they don't want to abuse them. Okay, not exactly what I expected this to look like. Interesting, but I don't think there was... Occult science in India and among the ancients, with an account of their mystic initiations and history of spiritism. And a bookmark from Brodick's books. I've got books from them before. I have, this is my uh, antiquarian section here. And uh, they usually have like random occult books that I like. So this is what it looks like inside, just a really bright cloth, lime green-ish, nice. I do want to know why they clipped this, but whatever. This one is... 274 pages. It's written in kind of an older font style, as you would expect. And it is copyright 1971, so it's not as old as my other books, but it's okay. So. This is not going to go with those, because this is mostly like. This is 1950s and older, mostly. I think this is probably the newest book. A Comprehensive View of Freemasonry. When was it published? 1973, okay. So maybe it can go with its buddy. This is actually two years older, so. I guess I could put it here. Just make it a very convoluted library here. Anyway. So I got two more of these small packages. They really wrap these things up. So hopefully... You guys are having a good 
Well, it's, it's Monday here for me. I just got home from work, which is how I have mail and time to make a video. So hopefully your Monday is just as wonderful. Got some, got some relaxing work today, to be honest. All right. See if I can slip this out. Maybe, maybe not. There we go. And then another layer of packaging, because why not? Why not wrap it 14 times? So I do have plans. I figure I'll talk about this while I'm unboxing. Hi, Aoife, again. Uh, the next video I'm gonna make, well, I did have a plan. I don't remember it at the moment. We'll discuss it after this. So what book was this supposed to be? This is, ah, okay. It's called Hebrew Idolatry and Superstition. So what is it actually? So most of the books that I collect are occult-ish, occult. This one is from Eighteen ninety three. Hebrew idolatry and superstition, its place in folklore. So I have a whole section here about Norse mythology and kind of similar texts. And then um, below that is European, so Irish, Scottish, whatever. Uh, Celtic, you know, all similar origins. Hi, Coco. So this one, I'm not sure it'll go. I don't know what this is. This might be a, like a library label or something. It's fairly small. It looks like it's, is it really only 80 pages? It is 80 pages. So, little baby book. Do for now. And last one of these media mail. <laughs> These things come super wrapped. They, uh, the antiquarian booksellers do not play. I'm trying to remember what my next video is going to be. So, oh, right. So I'm studying more about Hinduism. Apparently it's going to be a long study, as you would expect. So I'll probably go over a little bit of perennialism 
at some point, maybe. But the next video I wanted to do was kind of an about me, where my what my path is, an update video. Because I haven't really... I think I did an introduction, but I don't believe I've done any updates recently. So I'll do an update video soon, kind of who I am, what my goals are in collecting books. And once, so I have the Bhagavita Purana here. I have two of the books, one of them is still coming in the mail, and I have another set of three that should be coming in. And when those come in the mail, I'll do a library tour. So hopefully soon. And just kind of explain what sections I have, why they're organized the way they are. If anybody's interested. Getting a little too bold with this knife here, or box cutter. Why wrap this in a plastic bag? Is this... All right. Ooh. Oh, gilded edges. Alrighty, we're in business. The Light of Asia by Sir Edwin Arnold. That is, that is nice. I wonder if that's... Is it? No, it doesn't. It, it, so this seems to be just like raised bumps. So I actually, if anyone's still interested, let me know. I will do a binding video. I've had this one just sitting here for a while, but this is what's supposed to happen. Why these bumps exist is because there's rope underneath when you bind pages using this specific method. And this one I bound uh, I haven't read this yet. Ragnarok, The Age of Fire and Gravel, which has been long out of print, so I just bound my own copy from 1885. Uh, anyway, but this is The Light of Asia. It's got nice gilded edges. That's beautiful. And look at that, look at that end paper little s swallows I guess I don't know what those are oh it has a weird it has an inscription that I can't read because that cursive is far too convoluted for me maybe somebody can read it if you pause quick enough okay so they added the pages here for a while it's nice thick paper though and then we've got uh, what appears to be the author's portrait as is the style in a lot of older books with the uh, the nice paper so you don't bleed onto the other page okay the light of Asia or great renunciation uh, the Mahav, I can't pronounce this at the moment, Mahabhinish Kramana, being the life and teaching of Gautama, Prince of India and founder of Buddhism, as told in verse by an Indian Buddhist by Sir Edwin Arnold from 1981. This is in really good condition. Look at that. The edges are fine. This is preserved really well. Okay, so I don't know what this means. 
says this volume is dutifully inscribed to the sovereign grand master and companions of the most exalted order of the star of India by the author. Preface, in the following poem, I have sought by the medium of an imaginary Buddhist votary to depict the life and character and indicate the philosophy of that noble hero, the reformer the, and reformer, Prince Gautama of India, the founder of Buddhism. And he goes on. So they're kind of shorter pages that I'm used to, not as condensed, but that might be because of the publishers that I'm used to reading. This is really nice. It's a very well-preserved book for its age. Yeah, this is well done. I am very happy with this. The, the cover's a little lacking, but I'm not upset at all. I could actually read this and not worry about it, despite its age. Because, you know, they used quality materials. 1891. So I'll, if anybody's interested, I can go through the antiquarian books in more depth later. Uh, a lot of them I haven't read just, like I haven't read these physical copies. I have digital copies of almost all of them because they're public domain. Um, the physical copies are a little, like I'll go through them and I'll, I'll browse through, but I don't wanna, I don't wanna tear them or anything. So, last one, some brand new books uh, I bought from Miskatonic. I have a oh, box. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So this one I don't have to worry about cutting into. package of books. Oh, we got more books. All right, this is going to be a longer video than I expected. We're at 18 minutes. Hope you guys are having fun. <laughs> so uh, I'll put a timestamp, I guess, so people can skip to this point if they just wanted to see the new books. All right. Let me see. Anyway, so the first books we're going to look at we got two in this package. We have the. Oh, okay, that makes sense. Two from Anne Sophia Press. We've got the Black Magic Evocation of. Shimha Meforash and Sefer Yarok Ruashot. I, I probably mispronounced most of that, but I, I gave an attempt. Don't say I didn't. <laughs> when you can, it's free country, probably. So it's got a nice cover. I like it. Seems to be well made. Nice clean pages. Uh, in papers, not good, not bad. They're okay, just kind of cardboardish. This is from 2016, I guess. Old Aeon Sophia Press logo, or new, I don't know what it is. I don't follow them very well.
I'm not gonna assume that I know what they mean by this. Interesting. I'm sure I will get to know later. So, all my occult books are on this side. So it quotes the Bible, and then the Quran, and then the Zohar. And here's our title page. A very nice diagram. Table of contents. It's going. Is that it? Tell me that that's not it. They're, they're very detailed in their table of contents for sure. Who has this level of detail in their table of contents? This book does. Every two to three pages is its own um, reference, which I'm sure can come in helpful. So we have a preface to the second edition, interesting. This book is designed for use in the practice of black magic. In essence, it divides or dissects, some might say vivisects, the monotheist deity, the god of Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, St. Paul, and Muhammad into 72 carefully delineated segments, then lays out a system whereby the witch may conjure these dismembered enumerations of the word of creation as goethic entities, goethic entities in the service of the black arts. Uh, and he literally just ends this, like, so it continues down here, but he literally ends this with Hail Satan. Interesting. So, uh... <laughs> I'm gonna leave that alone. So we have the Tree of Life, as you would see in most Kabbalistic things. The Tree of Knowledge, the Quipple. Got some interesting black and white diagrams, what appears to be a sigil, another sigil, another sigil. I would wager there's a lot of sigils in this book, just flipping through it randomly. We got tables, all kinds of guides, interesting. And it ends up being about 510 pages. So a nice thick read if this is what kind of things you're interested in. And then we have the Sefer Barak Ruashat, which is probably terribly mispronounced again. Same type of end paper. Being a grimoire of lunar spirits who comprise the explicit name of Satan, expanding the mysteries of the moon. This one says it was published first edition in 2014, second in 2018. Table of contents, the brain of the moon cat. All right, interesting. Again, we're separating this into maybe maximum three pages between table of contents. Very specific table of contents. Table of illustrations. You know what, that's probably what I ended up accidentally going through was a table of illustrations as well. Very detailed. So the brain of the moon calf is about the prophetic babblings of the divine lunatic. Sounds like a title we all aspire to have, right? Oh, look, this one's in color. We have a spirit. All right. Look, I'm fascinated with, uh, if you guys haven't picked up on that, I'm fascinated with images in these books. I like, I like nice illustrations, even if it's just tables like this. I appreciate some illustrations. Just kind of, uh, gives the mind something to ponder as you go through a book. It also pads your word count, but, or page count, but, you know. Ooh, that's nice. An amulet. That's gotta be a big amulet, if we're being honest. How much detail can you throw into a small amulet like this? Like, you, you can't just throw that on a quarter. It could take you a very long time. All right, look at that. Tables and so on and so forth. 
I'll go through this later. Necromatic hours. All right. And this one ends up being about 340 pages with a messed up few back pages. Kind of wavy. I don't know what's going on with this. Whatever. Wavy pages will not dissuade me. All right, the next books we have, one, two, three, four, five, six, six books. Uh, the first one, we have Kabbalah, Mirror of Art and Nature. A critical edition of German and Latin editions 1615 to 1616, together with an annotated English translation. So, here we go. It's a thin book, I expected it to be, knowing Ouroboros Press. At this time, I have... It's not over there, is it? Oh well, I have a couple of their books somewhere. They have nice, uh, this is kind of the style that they always do, and then they'll have just kind of a, this thing going on. All right, so here's your title page. They don't really have in papers. It's just standard kind of paper. A little thicker than the pages inside. So we have contents. Illustrations. So, yeah, this is just gonna be a discourse on the Kabbalah. I believe it's going to be all right we have german text latin text english translation as they said oh look at that now this is that's where it's at look at that nice fancy kind of hermetic illustrations is that that, this looks kind of like this, the uh, Scarecrow in The Wizard of Oz. <laughs> right? Interesting. Kind of hermetic art. And this ends up being... Uh, an unknown number of pages because they didn't number them normally. So we have 134 pages and then we have the appendix, appendices or appendix uh, that's T pages. A through T. The next book we have is a paperback, The Holy Diamond by, by Frater Archer. I knew this was going to be, like I ordered it paperback, so it has no end papers, it's not fancy, it's just a, just a text I wanted a copy of. Bibliothèque Russe, 2018 edition, so here's your title page, here's your table of contents. I do my thing and you do your thing. I am not in this world to live up to your expectations, and you are not in this world to live up to mine. You are you and I am I, and if by chance we find each other, it's beautiful. If not, it can't be helped. For you are I and I am you. Your name is mine and mine is yours, for I am your image. Okay.
So this one should go through Got history, memory, practice. Where's the, uh, is there no? Oh, yeah, okay. So the history is among the Chaldeans, Zoroastrians, ancient Greeks, communion with the holy diamond, uh, status with your holy diamond. Trust, Joy, Darkness, Encounters, Selected Resources. So it should be somewhere around 180-ish pages. Yeah. And this is from... No idea what publisher. Let's see. What's it say? Scarlet Imprint. Okay, so same as... One of these. I had something Scarlet Imprint. All right. Oh, is this is this a Nephilim press book? All right. So I have the Clippeth Opus Three. This is a nice cover. Look at that. It's nice. We all like beautiful things, right? Got a snake in paper. Clippeth Opus Three. The cycles of Primal Chaos. Oh, somebody was asking me about this. I might recommend this to him. He was looking for um, information on the Primal Chaos. Literally Primal Chaos. So, Clip Up Journal is a grimoire focusing on the diverse paths of magic in its entire splendor. Our main focus is to cross the paths of knowledge via praxis, ritual, and gnosis, working intensely in each one of the volumes offered here. Through this third opus called Disciples of Primal Chaos, the focus is to go back to such primal states of consciousness through the methods of atavistic resurgence, awakening the immortal essence of the self through the development of our own divinity with direct experience with spirits, servitors, guardians, and the loas of our own temples. It is there where the sacred nectars are consumed, where the secret seed incarnates. Through the hidden labyrinths and the secret wisdom veiled by the tendrils of transhuman entities. So then we enter once again the cycles of primal chaos. Uh, okay. And then we have the contents here. So we have Kali, one I recognize for sure. Becoming Hoodoo, Up Above, The Path of Nasa, and Alchemical Catharsis, Clippeth, Hypothic, Initiation, Interesting, Black and White Imagery, Kind of a, so here's our Introduction, Initiation, Becoming Hoodoo, Oh, that's pretty cool. I like this. It's not, it's not the most detailed drawing, but it's, I like, I like the big fiery head. <laughs> okay, so it seems like a lot of, are these all drawn, drawn by the same person? Yeah, Kyle Fight. Okay. So it seems like, uh, that people who are different practitioners illustrate these things. Like this is an entirely different style. And so this one goes 150 pages basically. It's nice. Just a couple to go. All right, so this is The Secrets of the Kala Circle, a tale of fictitious people faithfully recounting strange rites still practiced by this cult, followed by a translation of a very old MS on the science of breath by Elizabeth Sharp. Introduction by David Templeman. Not 
not the most beautiful cover in the world, but I liked the title. Who doesn't want to know the secrets of the Kola Circle with a nice Hindu symbol on the cover? Nothing on the back. Okay, so the author known as Elizabeth Sharp was born Phoebe Elizabeth Lavender in Bangalore, India in 1888. At age 17, she married uh, an army officer 11 years her senior, but it was, uh, okay, so it just goes into her private life right off the bat. So here is our title page. says the Tatum Press 2012, so it probably was, I've not heard of them, this one, Tatum Press, I will link a couple of these publishers down below, but you know what, I'll probably just link Miskatonics, because I haven't had the best use your experience with all these publishers. So I'll link a couple of them. The ones that I've personally ordered from and can vouch for. Oh, okay, so this says, all right. It mentioned uh, Crowley in here, so it caught my eye. Let me get through this. So it's not, it's not a, uh, it seems to be mostly just kind of normal printer paper, to be honest with you. But I'm sure that the information is interesting. We have 90 something pages, 94 if you include the reviews. And then you have a small index at the back. Anyway, I'll definitely go through this. I'll probably I'll put it here. Then we have Crystal Gazing from Nephilim Press. I figured, why not? Why not pick up a book about this? I'll, I'll read it eventually. Crystal Gazing, it's history and practice with a discussion of the evidence for telepathic scrying. Uh, published initially in 1905, this is the redone version. I think I have a different book done kind of in a similar way. So the contents are superstition and incredulous incredulity, probably pronounced that wrong, uh, vision and visions, crystal visions, the speculum and the method of using it, historical, historical again, the incantation or call, Egyptian scrying, more Egyptian scrying, prophetic and telepathic scrying, evidential cases, exp and then experimentation. So here you go, there you go. So she starts the book by saying, well, whoever starts the book by saying, do you believe in crystal gazing is a question which one is often asked. One can only reply, the reply, what do you mean by believing in crystal gazing? If you do mean, do I believe that it is worthwhile to pay half a crown or a guinea as a fee to a person who professes to discover by crystal gazing the whereabouts of lost property or of a missing friend or to foretell events? I do not believe in crystal gazing. Uh, one hears wonderful tales of successes in this kind, but not at first hand, and the people who tell them are not very critical, while the practicers are, to begin with, breaking the law. So she continues. Well, this person continues. Who wrote this? Either way. So 
So it seems, oh, the introduction is written by Andrew Lang. So he continues most likely. This is a long introduction. This is, this section is introduction. That's, that's extensive. Uh, 47 pages, I believe. All right, so chapter one, we'll go through this. We go all the way to 160-ish with a couple of illustrations. One, two, just a couple. Well, I think it's more meant to just give you some information. So now we have Nicholas Flamel's hieroglyph hieroglyphical key being an explication of alchemical fi figures together with his summary of philosophy and his testament. So here's your cover, your spine, the back. The book uncovered, same kind of cover Ouroboros Press usually has. Just kind of short books, usually. There's your portrait. Translated in 1624, I guess, William Wayne Westcott, Westcott, William Wynne Westcott. Here's our table of contents. Continued, and we have some figures. And we continue the figures. The preface, no apology is needed for the study of the life, work, and success of Nicholas Flamel. He was alike conspicuous by his riches and by the excellent uses he made of them. The vast sums of money which he expended in charitable and public works have, been, have made his name famous and respected even down to our own time. Many authors have written on the subject of his life attainments, but none of them produces any record of a dishonest or wicked action. The only evil suggestion found among many volumes is that as the nameless author cannot bring himself to believe in transmutation, he falls back on the imputation that Flamel made an enormous fortune by cheating, but of this there is not a scrap of evidence, and some persons might smile and say this process were the harder than the former. So, interesting. Starts out with uh, some controversy, I suppose. Or an attempted uh, escape of controversy. We have an invocation to God in the beginning. Which is what it says, eternally praised be the Lord my God. And it goes on. Yeah, seems like a prayer. Introduction. Kind of typical ink drawings throughout. And we end up with a book that's roughly 128 pages. Interesting. This one goes with the other Ouroboros Press. There we go. So, that is today's lengthy unboxing. Uh, hopefully you guys enjoyed it. I'll try to make some 
timestamps make it easier for you. Anyway, so whatever time it is where you are, I hope you have a wonderful morning, afternoon, evening, or night. Cheers.